Captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on primetime, a second gubernatorial team makes it official, making their 2018 run for Adeloup. Mr. Lacanto has that story from the GEC's headquarters. Also tonight, a third ethics complaint is filed, and it calls out more than half of the island's senators. Issa's got that report for you. And the local Catholic church announces the launch of a program they hope will prevent future abuse. Hafari, everybody, and good evening. A second team has officially thrown in their hat for Adeloupe as Senator Frank Hogan Jr. and former U.S. Attorney Alicia Limtiako are vying for the Democratic gubernatorial nomination. The pair are making it official by filing candidacy papers with the Election Commission today. Nestor Lacanto has tonight's top story. Hogan says they will lay out the specifics of their campaign platform in the days ahead. But the key to winning Adeloupe? It's going to boil down to efficient and effective government because our people want to see that, in fact, the services are, de are delivered, that the tax refunds come in at a much quicker pace, and that uh, we're able to meet our commitments and pay our vendors in a timely manner. Before becoming U.S. Attorney, Lim Tiako was Guam's first elected Attorney General. She met with Uggen several times before accepting his offer. They share similar humble beginnings, and she was especially impressed with his dedication and work ethic. And ultimately what it came down to was, again, also seeing that for uh, over 20 years uh, of his lifetime, he has fully committed to serving our community. Hugan is a nine-term senator who's seen the Democrats maintain control of the legislative majority, but it will be 16 years since they've held Adeloupe. He acknowledges that the key to victory is keeping full party support post-primary. The diversity will translate into unity in the end. And that's our anticipation and that's exactly our commitment in terms of making sure that we are true to our campaign theme that in fact we're going to promote family and we're going to promote faith and that's keeping the unity within the party. There are two other Democratic gubernatorial candidates, Bank of Guam Chair Lou Leon Guerrero, who is running with Josh Tenorio, and former Governor Carl Guterres, who has yet to name a running mate. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. It is complaint number three filed with the Legislative Ethics Committee, but is this latest one that calls out a majority of local senators politically motivated? That's the argument of one University of Guam professor who was speaking out after being handed over on Monday. Issa Baza has a story. It's a difference okay, guys, of opinion. That? On one side, Guam Citizens for Public Accountability spokesperson Ken Leon Guerrero argues senators violated the law. Raising the fuel taxes in direct violation of public law 24-222, which requires any increase in taxes or new debt above $25 million to be voted on in a general election and approved by the public. On the other, UOG professor Ron McNinch. This is voodoo politics. And you know, if people want to, to control the legislature in this sort of way, then they should get themselves elected to a majority of eight and start doing the things that they want to do. At issue is an ethics complaint filed by Leon Guerrero on Monday over the recent passage of Bill 122. The new legislation will incrementally raise the liquid fuel tax, but according to Leon Guerrero, without a public vote, it violates Guam law. However, McNinch argues that according to the Mason's Manual of Legislative Procedure, that's not the case. In this particular case, a statute passed by a legislature cannot bind future actions of another legislature unless a constitution, state constitution, or in this case it would be a Guam constitution, or the Guam Organic Act specifically specifies that that can be done. In this case, there's no specification. He adds that because eight out of Guam's 15 senators are named in the complaint, the remaining seven, a minority, would be unable to act on the findings of the Ethics Committee. He deems the complaint politically motivated. Meanwhile, Leon Guerrero says it simply meant to keep senators accountable, 
especially when government debt has doubled in Guam over the past seven years. Whenever you want to raise taxes, introduce new taxes, such as they're planning to do with different bills, or increase public debt, you have to put the measure before the public in a general election and the public gets a chance to vote on it because we're the ones that are going to pay for it. He hopes the legislation will be repealed and then voted on in a general election. The complaint has since been referred to Senator Regine Biscoe-Lee, who indicated she will act in accordance with the legislature's standing rules. Lee is not one of those named in the complaint. She adds the mere receipt of the complaint does not indicate any actual violations have occurred. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Issa Baza. And let's turn now to news with the Catholic Church. As starting next month, the Archdiocese of Agana will go live with an online resource to ensure every adult that comes into contact with youth at church or in the classroom gets a regular refresher course on safe boundaries and mandated reporting. KUM's Crystal Paco has details. Anywhere from 500 to 800 individuals who work at or with the church will need to log on and take a refresher course. Any adult that's going to be in, in regular contact and especially in some kind of leadership role uh, with young people uh, must go through this training. In a press conference on Tuesday, Coadjutor Archbishop Michael Burns announced their choice program, one he's used himself years ago as a priest. We decided to adopt the Virtus online uh, program for the protection of minors. The program, according to the website, provides training on the signs of child sexual abuse, methods and means by which offenders commit abuse, and easy steps one can use to prevent child sexual abuse. To date, 130-plus clergy sexual abuse lawsuits have been filed in the local and federal courts. The majority of the cases are alleged to have occurred decades ago, and many of the perpetrators now deceased. The church remains committed to preventing future abuse. It uh, allows for... Uh, follow-up online um, over the course of months so that a, it's not just a one-time training but there's uh, refresher courses that keep coming back to keep you alert. The program also provides for background checks. According to the church's new policies, background checks are mandatory. Prior to the adoption of the Virtus online trainings, the Task Force for the Protection of Minors conducted trainings at every parish and Catholic school. Archbishop Burns cited a recent criminal sexual conduct case out of Bishop of Gardner Memorial School, which resulted in the arrest of current sports director Peregrine Perry Corpus Nicholas. It says something about the effectiveness of our task force because our task force efforts because the school did everything right um, in, in immediately making a report uh, to civil authorities. Um, dealing uh, immediately with uh, the accused and providing uh, support and, and pastoral care and attention uh, to the victim. This is really important. And the, uh, I've had it, the, the young person um, has returned to school and feels safe because she saw it in action. Virtus will go online by November 15 with an ambitious target date for the completion of trainings set for the end of January 2018. The program costs $2,800, a fee which the Chancery will absorb for the first year of implementation. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. A 53-year-old Malolo man is the latest person to come forward alleging child sex abuse involving the local Catholic Church. Identified only as JT, it was between 1973 through 1976 that he was sexually molested by Father Louis Brulard, who was the priest at San Isidro Catholic Church and a Boy Scout master. JT, during that time, was an altar boy and Boy Scout. Several years later, in 1981, Father Brulard wrote to JT's parents offering to pay for his college tuition, airfare, food, and housing. His parents convinced him that it was an opportunity he couldn't pass up. After he arrived, Father Boulard took him to Canada, where he allegedly tried to force JT to have sex with him. The victim refused and told Boulard he would not be his sex toy. This was the last time JT ever saw or had a sexual encounter with the priest. The Mandanya Drug Task Force net multiple arrests in Chalampago, Asen in Dedido. In total, six people faced drug charges as it started with a raid in Chalampago, where 23-year-olds Jacob Perez and David St. Nicholas were arrested. The U.S. Marshals had just executed a search warrant with Perez and St. Nicholas found inside a home with drugs and linked to a stolen vehicle. 
Investigators later said they picked up 24-year-old Jaylene Torres and 30-year-old Cristobal Quintanita in Assen. Then up in Dedido, they arrested 41-year-old Louis Hokog and 38-year-old Jonalyn Hokog Mesa, once again on drug charges. The pictures were circulating all day on social media. Several cars vandalized with graffiti at a Harmon apartment complex. Turns out the culprit may have been a 14-year-old boy. Police attribute his capture after receiving information from the community. The teenager is confined at DYA, charged with criminal mischief beyond control and violation of curfew. Stay tuned, everybody. We are back right after this. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. We value relationships. Because when we commit, I love you, God, until you're 80, until you're 90, until you're 100, forever. We are in it for the long run. So you can enjoy the moments that matter. Because when we commit to relationships, we never stop caring. Calvo's Select Care, health care that is always there for you. with a brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 8 at it and &E. It's Hyundai's kickoff to savings event going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Score big, save big with the all-new redesigned Hyundai Sonata Hybrid. Gain those extra yards with up to 45 miles per gallon highway and an introductory savings of $4,500. Or check out Guam's best offensive line, like a new Accent starting at $11,995. Or the new Elantra starting at $16,995. How about the new Tucson starting at $19,995? Plus, every new Hyundai gets Guam's best warranty. It's Hyundai's kickoff to savings event at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. When you know what you want and you want it great, look no further than Ruby Tuesday's new Steakhouse Sensations menu. Choose from a 20-ounce dry aged prime bone-in ribeye or an 8-ounce filet mignon tenderloin. Either steak, seared to your preference and served with two specialty sides, like the Nancy mashed potatoes, grilled asparagus, or roasted Brussels sprouts. Enjoy surf and turf and add a succulent lobster tail or tender grilled salmon filet to complete your meal. This plus a whole lot more, it's Steakhouse Sensations for a limited time and only at Ruby Tuesday Guam. The Down Syndrome Association of Guam exists to support families of individuals with Down Syndrome. We're a group of parents who have children with Down Syndrome and know the joys and challenges of raising them. For more information about the health, development, and education of a child or adult with Down Syndrome, please contact Vicki Ariola at 472-6114. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. Welcome back, everybody. We have been telling you this past couple of days about a call for the community to prepare and about shelters opening up overnight. And the previously declared tropical storm watch has now been fortunately canceled. Though we've been spared, the island did see some of the effects from the passing storm. Nick Delgado takes us down south. Guam is in the clear, but Tropical Storm 27W did pack quite the punch passing south of the territory. The waves causing water to slowly creep up at Inarahan Pool. It's a scene Timothy Harum is all too familiar with. This is usually gets flooded. Tony Mansipit hunkers down items in his yard and ties up loose ends on his canopy. Village Mayor Ernest Chargoloff works with DPW to keep drainages clear. A method to prevent flooding. For the most part, he says his community is always prepared. It's a recurring, so they know what, to do. and you know, the residents pretty much know what to do. And it's midday into the late afternoon that Homeland Security officials tell me we'll be feeling most of the effects of this storm passing south of the island. Take a look here behind me. You see the waves just off the Mariso Pier stacking up over here to my left. Those waves crashing into the shore. 
The strong winds and constant showers in the southern villages didn't stop tourists and locals alike from going out, the winds even causing spot outages throughout the island. Guam Power Authority crews were also out cutting down bamboo and heavy vegetation to prevent them from taking down power lines. A high surf advisory remains in place until 6 p.m. Wednesday. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Sinek Delgado. After Guahan Academy Charter School employees faced a payless payday last week, checks were finally cut today. GAC's interim spokesperson Deacon Larry Claris adds employees receiving direct deposits through Bank of Guam also received the money today, while those using other banks should be receiving their deposits tonight or by tomorrow morning. He adds they plan to meet with DOA to avoid any other payless paydays. And also tonight, the proliferation of election year political signs along island roadways may soon be a thing of the past. Lawmakers have placed in the voting file Senator Tommy Morrison's bill to ban fixed campaign signage on public property. Senator Tom Addis spoke in support of the measure. I think we've come into an age where, where um, po the, the political billboards out there on the public rights of way really becomes a visual assault. I don't care how pretty or how handsome you are on that billboard, it's still a visual assault. assault. Senator Adda says there are many other alternatives for candidates to get their exposure, especially in this new digital age. But the measure does not stop another long-standing island political tradition. Candidates will still be allowed to hold up signs and wave along public roadways. The legislation does not apply to signs on private property. Sports is coming up next. Stay tuned. From the network that brought you up to three times more data comes the dawn of a new data. The epic story of Guam's only network brave enough to give 10 free gigs of bonus data on every line every month to customers who bundle their services. Reviewers are calling the offer totes awesome, best deal ever, and yes. Visit GTA.net for details. St. John's Drama Department presents the Karen Flores Production. Lights out. This original play is November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, second floor of the plaza. Tickets $10 each and can be purchased at the door. For more information, call 488-6899. Finally, I found chicken tenders that can pass as mine, which is nice because I've got better things to do. Peggy, I finished his shoulder. Millennials, am I right? No. Oh, no. Yes. Dinner. Introducing McDonald's Buttermilk Crispy Tenders. Juicy and made with 100% white meat. They're not grandma's. I'm okay with that. But she's okay with that. At Island Cancer Center, we treat our patients and their families like our family. We have all been touched by cancer, and it is important to feel comfortable and secure under the care of our health professionals. You can count on us for skilled cancer specialists, the most advanced cancer-fighting technology on the island, and a commitment to caring for you or your loved one with compassion, respect, and empathy. Our family, treating your family. Island Cancer Center, located on Guam Medical Plaza. Visit us at islandcancercenter.com or call 646-3363. This sale is so big, it's national. Get up to five medium pizzas for $7 each when you buy any medium or large pizza at menu price. You heard right. That's five medium pizzas for $7 each. The national pizza sale, only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Avene Marianas, Guasi Chris, Tuesday, Matis. Hey, you got a great uh, segment here featuring some outstanding youth football teams. Triple J Ford presents Playmakers. GNYFF Playmakers, presented by Triple J Ford Youth Football League. Strength, commitment, community. 
My name is Shayana Tamanglo. I play for the Southern Cowboys and I play for Mandiki Ki and I play quarterback and running back and safety. My name is Damian Loka. I play for the Southern Cowboys. I play running back, quarterback and safety. My team is awesome because we work together. My team is awesome because we win games. My favorite NFL team is Dallas Cowboys. My favorite NFL team is Dallas Cowboys. Break it down! My name is Jovan Smano. I play for the Southern Cowboys, Mana Division. My position is guard, nose guard, and running back. My name is Kaden Aguero. I play for the Southern Cowboys, Mana Division. My positions are quarterback and safety. My team is awesome because our te my teammates and my coaches. Football is important to me, to me because, it, because it's fun. Something that is valuable that I learned from the, my coaches to, is to be um, humbled and no mercy and uh, play fair. Youth football is important to me because it teaches me respect and discipline. My coaches teach me to have respect and good sportsmanship. My favorite NFL team is the Dallas Cowboys. My favorite NFL team is the Seattle Seahawks. Get the ball! Get the ball! Go up, up, man! Go up, up! There you go! Oh! Go back! Go back! Go back! My name is Rose Caldwell, and I have been a teen parent for eight years. The best thing about being a teen parent is to actually be involved with my kids and their love for the game of football. My name is Sheila Blas. Uh, we've been a team parent for four years now. The best thing about being a team parent is being involved in your kids' lives with um, sports. My name is Felix Manglonia. I'm, I'm from Southern Cowboys. I'm mega division and I'm a runner back. Our team is awesome because the coaches, the team, and we really like to have fun. Youth football is important to me because it teaches us discipline and to be humble. My favorite NFL team is the Dallas Cowboys. Hi, my name is Vance Matanotnia. I play for the, the Southern Cowboys, Mega Division. My position is, is right tackle. What makes my team awesome is that we have teamwork and we put all our heart in it. Youth football is so important to me because ever since I was a little kid, I want to experience how football is. The valuable lesson I learned from my coaches is to never give up and keep on trying. Hi, my name is Justin Cruz and I play for the Southern Cowboys. I'm in the Mature Division and my position is a middle linebacker. I think what makes our team awesome is our bond. Uh, I think a valuable lesson I learned from my coaches is to work as a team and to maintain uh, our, and, and to stay disciplined. Hi, my name is Ian Apti. I play for the Southern Cowboys. I'm in the Mature Division and I play running back and safety. Uh, the valuable lesson that I learned from my coaches is that uh, we stay, uh, stay humble and play as a team. My favorite NFL team is the Dallas Cowboys. Great organization there, Southern Cowboys. Yeehaw! We got another playmakers for you, Esta Agupa, Guausi, Chris, and Joss. 
Nissan's fall clearance event is on with the best prices of the year. Save as much as $8,000 on the all-new A-Passenger Armada. Get the cargo van selected best in class with 25 miles per gallon combined. The fuel-efficient NV200 compact cargo van with 5-year, 100,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty starting at just $127 per pay period. Great deals on Versus Sedan, Frontier King Cab, or the 7-passenger Pathfinder starting at just $87 per pay period during the fall clearance event at Nissan Upper Tumon. Find out more at NissanGuam.com. Say hello to the widest 4G LTE network in the Marianas, Guam, Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. When your passion goes beyond your island, choose a plan that takes you further. With Docomo Pacific's My Plans, you can do a lot throughout the Marianas. 20 gigs for $79 or 30 gigs for $99. All the data you need to connect, share, and make all your ideas happen. Dream big, reach higher with My Plans. Docomo Pacific, better together. This sale is so big, it's national. Get up to five medium pizzas for $7 each when you buy any medium or large pizza at menu price. You heard right. That's five medium pizzas for $7 each. The national pizza sale, only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. And before we close out the news tonight, here's your latest round of birthday shoutouts. Happy birthday to Jerry Uggen. Love your wife and children. Celebrating his birthday is Kaden Rosalind. Love dad, mom, and your brothers. Happy birthday to Tony Big Boy Paloma. And that's it. Happy birthday to everybody. Remember, you can find out all of our tips for how you can think peak each and every day on our social media channels. Bye-bye. This captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. Think Pink is made possible by our community partners, American Cancer Society, IHP Medical Group, Island Cancer Center, and Foodies Shell. Hi, today, everyone. I'm Issa Baza. Welcome to our special Think Pink edition of Health, Home, and Lifestyle. Tonight, we have dedicated our show to spreading awareness about breast cancer because the month of October is, of course, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We begin our special with details about a breast cancer conference titled Unmasking Breast Cancer, Sharing Wisdom and Resources that took place on Friday. Here's more. So please sign. It's something she continues to battle to this day. My name is Rosalie Zabala. I'm the Health Services Administrator at the Department of Public Health and Social Services. I'm also speaking as a cancer patient today. Zabala has headed the breast cancer prevention program at Public Health for roughly one decade. But ironically, she also became a breast cancer patient last year. I had cancer. I ignored the symptoms. I was so busy with work and I was busy caring for others. I forgot about myself. So when it was found out, it was already um, it metastasized to my lymph node. That was uh, last year, 2016, and I, I'm still on treatment. It's going on for two years now. Please don't be shy. Zabala shared her story at a breast cancer conference held at the Hilton Guam Resort and Spa last week. That included a handful of guest speakers and focused on cancer management, treatments, procedures, and modality. As both a patient and healthcare professional, she said her biggest advice to people in the community is to be your biggest advocate. If something is wrong with your body, don't just wait. Go and seek uh, information. Uh, our program, the Breast uh, Cervical Cancer Program, offers free mammogram and diagnostic screening if you qualify. Meanwhile, surgical oncologist from the Guam Regional Medical City, Dr. Hank Hill, reminds people that early intervention is key, adding that with today's technology, cancer diagnosis is no longer a death sentence. I've been working as a surgical oncologist uh, for probably the last 17 years and this is a passion I have. I got into surgical oncology because my father was diagnosed with sigmoid cancer and he died at a young age at 49 with stage 4 disease because of a being late diagnosis. He said with breast cancer incidents on the rise here in Guam, his goal is to promote early detection.